Welcome back. Today I'm looking at Sotero Reference Manager in conjunction with Oscola, which is a law referencing footnote system. Now with Sotero you can actually store your sources and then footnote them in a Word document. So without further ado, let's get stuck right in and show you how to use it. So have a look at my link in the YouTube channel below and it'll show you from the beginning how to install Sotero from scratch. But today I just want to look at using the Oscola referencing system. So I'm going to open up Sortero. Now assuming you have downloaded and installed it, first thing you need to do, top left hand corner, is create a folder. So you can store your sources. So I'm going to type in there just generally law and click OK. Now law is a big subject isn't it? So I'm going to do a right click on law and do a new sub collection. I'm going to call this, what should we call this, family law. And I'm good to go. So then I could right click and create more folders, good night. I could do a two finger tap and do a new collection if I want. But I'm sticking with law for the moment. Now what I want to do here actually, because you know yourself, any work you use in your written work you need to cite if it's by someone else. But sometimes they also want a bibliography of stuff you've read but you did not cite. So what we could do here is then is do a right click on law again and create another new sub collection and we could call this you don't have to do it this way I'm just throwing something at you could call it family law bibliography stuff that you've read but you're not going to cite now I've got two folders to work with so I'm going to go on family law it doesn't really matter for the moment we need to find sources so I'm just going to go online and research obviously I'm just going to have a look for stuff show you how it works so I'm going to start with JSTOR you can use your internal libraries as well, or any sources that you want, even physical books you might have with you. So I'm just going to type in there, family law, do a search. And there we go, quite a few sources there to work with, haven't we? But obviously I'm not going to go through them all. By the way, a lot of these sources I can't access because I haven't got an academic email or password. But you'll get one from the university, so you'll be able to access a lot of these sources. So I'm just going to select the first one I see, journal article. And there we go. You've got a source to work with. And you might read it. It could be, it could be the abstract or whatever you're looking at now. Come to the right. I want to save that to Sortero. See there, if I tap on it and click the little option here, I can choose to save it in whatever folder I want. I want to put it in my family law one because this is something that I might want to use actually cite in my work and select. So now if I open up Sortero, I've now got that source in the middle. Look to the right, you can see it's a journal article with all the source information. And to the left, it's in my folder family law. So then I'll go back on the internet again. And I might go actually Google Scholar, I need to have a little look. So I'm going to pop in family law again. And then I want to come down and I want to click any link. So I'm just going to select the second one is an example. Now again, it looks like I've got another journal here. I can scroll down and look at it. I'm going to come up to the right again. But this time, I might have read it and decided, actually, I'm not going to cite this. I'm just going to keep this. and need to put this in my bibliography at the end of my work. So tap on it. Click drop down menu here and select family law bibliography. Because that's where you're going to put your sources that you're not going to cite and select done. And again, open up Sortero. We've now got one in family law bibliography and family law there. So we're going well. Going back online, let's find another source. Let's Google Books this time. So again, I'm going to keep with the same topic. Again, I'm going to choose anything with a preview here. So I'm going to choose family law in practice. And if you've ever been on Google Books, you know it gives you extracts from the book pages, but it doesn't give you the full book for obvious reasons that you wouldn't buy the book if you actually had it all online. So I'm going to scroll down to any page really as an example. Got us a big table of contents. And there we go. I found something here. So page 23, you might look at this and say, right, I'm going to use this in my work. And remember, come up to here. And I want to click on here and make sure I put it into my family law one. It's something that I wish that I might want to cite. And if I come open up Sortero, 
you can see now we've got family law stuff that you're going to cite and family law bibliography stuff read but you're not going to cite so open up your browser again I want to show you one more actually because websites can be a little bit tricky so I'm just going to type in there family law just do a general search scroll down here we go that will do and accept all now here we go another site that you might want to use for example so I'm going to scroll down and you click on the link I just click on that link as an example and then you say actually I might want to use this website or well, there again you might read it and not use it but I want to show you something here quickly come up here and I'm going to put that into your bibliography option because something you've read that you don't want to cite so I'm going to make sure it's in family law and select done make sure it's in that bibliography option now I'm going to minimize that now have a look in family law where I've just added that website can you see the little color blue there that indicates it's a website when it's white that indicates it's a journal and if I go to the stuff that you're going to cite and when it's dark blue indicates it's a book if it's a book that's open then it's a book section also if you're doing case law it actually shows you the scales of justice to reference that as a case but I'm going to go back to family law bibliography now I'm going to click on the website now look to the right here it doesn't bring up the author or year important factor when you're using websites one if there's no author for that website then you have to put the website name in there instead in the last name and two look for the year now it can be quite difficult on websites to establish the year or the author I normally go to the bottom to look for a year and a general look you might be able to see it but I can't see a year there so there's no point putting down a year that doesn't exist now author I can know I can't see an author as well it's got judgment at the bottom so what I could do is just put the name down family law of the website so I'm going to open up Sortero and just pop in there now this varies depending sometimes you have to put the web page name down on the website name check with your library where you're doing your degree and it'll tell you exactly what they need in there so it's imperative you check that and I couldn't find no year date so I'm gonna leave that blank so what have we got family law this is what I'm going to use to cite my work and this is what I'm also going to add at the end of my work bibliography of stuff I've read but I'm not going to cite so what we do next is open up a word document for me see if you're going to write your essay on family law if only it was that easy double tap blank document so have ourselves a title here and I'm just going to center that as well we're going through the uh, all the formatting but let's highlight that give that an underline and maybe make that a little bit larger right we're good to go and I'm going to align back to the left and change my formatting back to say 10 and not underlined so now I'm ready to start citing some work so let's open up my Sortero folder so this is the stuff I'm going to use remember the sources I got online so double tap it in the middle takes you straight back to that source where you originally got it now I might want to use some of this and I don't think it's going to let me highlight it because I can't even access it here but what I'll do is I'll type in an imaginary quote from this journal into Word and we're going to cite it I just put the first part in crime now I'm pretty sure with Oscola you don't need to quote direct quotes but again check with your academic library with that one now we're ready to start footnoting so at the top we've now got Sortero tab tap on it so come to the left you've got add edit citation tap on it for me now first thing you need to do is look for Oscola sometimes they ask you to use Harvard which you can use in this as well if you wish but I want to stick with Oscola because that's specifically what we're looking at I can't see it in there It'd be alphabetical as well so select manage sources and then select get additional styles and type Oscola in there for me and there we go We've got three types of Oscola the first one at the top which is your standard Oscola the second bit is no I bid and the first is University of York now if I scroll over you'll see they all look the same 
But bear in mind, I don't think they are. The first and second one isn't with no I bid. But the third one, I don't know if there's any variations. Now, I'm going to choose the first one. So tap on it and it stalls automatically into Sortero. If I scroll down and there it sits. Click OK. Now we're ready to cite our work. So add edit citation. Scroll down to our scroller. Leave it footnote. Leave everything default and select OK. Remember, family law, this is stuff I'm going to cite. There's a journal I want. And select OK. There's my first footnote, number one. If I scroll to the bottom, and then you can see the source at the bottom. So I'm going to carry on. Again, I'm going to go back to Sortero and do the book. Now, if you remember, if I go back to the original source, I can double tap it, but if I come back up here, the page number is imperative because you have to put, I'm not sure with our scholar, but double check, but I'm pretty sure you have to put the page number in of when you where you access that source. Because how is the lecturer going to know when you actually got that source from? So we've got page 23. So now we can go back to Word. Now I need to put a quote in from that book. So again, I'm going to make something up from page 23. That will do. This is a quote. And again, let's go through the process. Add. It's a book. And page 23. And now we're ready to go. You don't have to worry about prefixes or surfix. That's for in-text citations in Harvard. So select OK. We've got now number two. So at the bottom, you now got your footnote. For your second source as a book. And you can see the page number at the end, 23. So there you go, you've added your sources. Now I'm just going to open up Sortero quickly. Just to let you know in the book option, if you're accessing a lot of books, physical books you might have with you as well, if you select this and type in the ISBN number of the book or the DOI number of a journal, if you've got them physically with you, or PMIDs, that's more for PubMed, then it will find that source for you and add it to Sortero ready for you. But another good option is to remember what page you're looking at. See where it says Family Law, which is a book. Come to the right, we've got a notes option. Or an easier method is you can do a right click or add it at the top and select Add Note. And you've added a note. So at the right here, I could then type page 23. And then you could type out the quote from that book you were looking at. So it's all stored in here. Come back to the middle. And it's all there, good to go for you. Now we've done that, we need to now add, you don't always have to do this, but add your bibliography sources you've read, but are not going to cite. So how do we get them in? Got a problem. If I come up here and I'll select and add them through this way, add again, it's all going to add to your footnotes. We don't want that. So this is what we need to do. Once you've finished all your footnote, in, click the enter key a few times, type in there for me, or whatever you want to call it. They'll tell you what they need anyway. So we've got bibliography, which I'm going to center with the home tab. Then click the enter key. And again, align to the left. Now, we can now add that list of stuff you read, but you're not going to cite. So open up Sortero, and I find this is the easiest method, unless you find one better. Click on it, because you might have 15, 20, 30 sources. So use the select option here, select all, and that will select all the sources. Do a right click on it and select create bibliography from items. Make sure you choose your reference style. Now you've got an option here. You can save it as a Word document, which is rich text format, or website, or copy to clipboard, or even print. I want to copy to clipboard, click OK, so I can copy it as the sources that I've read, but not going to cite. And now I can paste. And there we go. So you end up with your whole list there at the top. Yeah, you know, what you're going to use at the bottom. And you can always change the formatting as well by highlighting it. Here. And then you can change the size and the formatting you want at the bottom. So that way, let's go to the top. You footnote your work. You've got all your footnotes for your work, and then you've got your bibliography of sources. You read and never cited all underneath. So there's a quick method just to show you. And one last tip, if I open up Sortero, tap off that. When you're actually citing something, 
So let me uh, go back up here or create the footnotes. I've just put, imagine this is from a journal or book. I'm going to go through the process again of selecting Sortero and remember, add edit. Now, whenever when you click on at the bottom here, you've got an option where you can add multiple sources. So you want to add more than one source when you do it. You can add multiple sources together by adding them in there if you want to. If I clicked on here, the book, you can see I can now add that to the list. So that's a good option as well. And the last option here, bottom left, show editor. So before you actually export it, if I scroll down, it shows you what your referencing will look like underneath. So you get an idea of how it will look when it's actually sent to your Word document. So click cancel there. 